This is full on Apple CarPlay running on my Tesla. Yes, it works, it's the real deal here. And I'm gonna show you in this video how you can add it to your Tesla step by step because I promise you it's way easier than you think. I'm also gonna add some physical buttons to my Tesla and even a control bar with physical turny knobs that I can use to adjust certain things. I know Teslas are known for their pristine minimal interior, but in this video, I'm hacking things and I'm gonna break the rules. And also a huge thanks to Teslite for sponsoring this video. Don't get me wrong, Teslas are amazing vehicles, but ever since they launched with their particularly ultra minimal interior, they've been a lot of controversial. Some people like me, you sort of get used to it. You sort of like the touchscreen controls, you sort of get used to a consolidated interface. It's not super annoying, but some people, and you know, rightfully so, just don't like it. They miss having a physical volume knob. They wish they had a button to actually open up the glove box and do stuff like that. They really want those controls that they're missing. And like I said, I understand why. The other thing that I hear all the time is adding CarPlayer Android Auto to your Tesla, because look, Tesla software is great. They've got this wonderful integration of the hardware and software of the vehicle, but there are some advantages to CarPlay that Tesla just can't replicate. There's an extremely wide uh, array of apps to choose from between third-party music streaming apps, different controls that are easy to use while driving. You've got different map options, charging options. It's really nice to have the option of those apps. And if you just listen to Tesla, but there is no solution. CarPlay and Android Auto just don't exist. They're not supported. And they think that that's sort of the end of that discussion, though the enthusiast community has been hard at work on sort of a fixing that and giving us a couple of really great solutions to easily add CarPlay or Android Auto right to our Tesla. And I should imagine that the world of Tesla modding can actually get pretty crazy. You can add in screens and RGB ambient lighting, and really there's a lot you can do with your car to make it your own if you're willing to sort of tear it apart and you're comfortable with sort of doing all that stuff. I, for one, like the idea of it, but I just know I don't have the time or the patience or the skill to do it. I'm looking for easy things that I can get off of, you know, websites online or off of Amazon, get into my car with very minimal installation, and then really change my experience, which is exactly exactly what the three products I'm gonna show in this video can do. Okay, so let me start first with buttons inside of your Tesla. I know this sort of sounds in a way sacrilegious to add physical buttons to this minimal interior inside of your car, but I promise you that once you experience this, it's actually really nice. And I've got two options here that I really love. Uh, one are the sexy buttons from Enhance Auto, and then the other product is brand new. This is the control bar from, I believe it's a new developer. I actually saw this making the rounds in video form a couple of months ago in the different Tesla communities, and I thought it was so cool that I personally reached out to the developer and I said, hey, can I try one of these and do a video on it? And they kindly said yes. And I don't think this is out just yet. This is a pre-production model, but it just came in the mail a couple of days ago. I want to get it installed in my car. And what this promises is to give you physical buttons and actual knobs you can use to control things uh, that goes right under the screen in your car. So I'm going to get this installed first. Let me show you what that's like. And actually, let me do a quick unboxing for you just to show you, well, what's in the box. All right, so now that we're in the car, before I actually get this thing mounted and installed, let me give you a quick idea of uh, a little bit of a closer look at how this works. So this is the control bar. You can see here that I just am sort of placing it here temporarily to get a good fit. That's what it's gonna look like. And what it adds here is a couple of buttons. So I've got three physical buttons, tactile buttons here. I've got three on that side, and then two of these knobs that I can use to adjust, I believe, things like the uh, AC system to adjust temperature and other things we will find out more soon. On the back here, just to give you a closer look, that's the USB-C port. And then, yeah, you've got some 3M adhesive that's just going to keep that thing right there. I believe it attaches, yeah, just basically right to the bottom of the screen there. There's an install video that I'm going to follow. We've got more 3M adhesive. I got some uh, different uh, controls, uh, stickers in here, as well as a splitter. There's some stickers in there. I'll show you more in a minute. Uh, and then the cable. So that's just sort of a little bit of a closer look at this unit. Let me get it installed and then sort of show you how it works. Okay, so that was probably the easiest install of a Tesla accessory I've ever done. Uh, they've got a great video that sort of walks you through what to do. You basically just sort of clean the bottom portion of the screen. You sort of stick uh, the control bar to there with the adhesive it's gonna mount. Just don't apply too much pressure because you don't wanna mess anything up. But for me, just a little bit of pressure and that thing is stuck there and not going anywhere. 
where I might need you to adjust it a little bit. I don't know if it's perfectly aligned. I just can't tell, but it looks good enough. Again, just for demonstrational purposes here, just to show you how this works. And then for anyone who's a big fan of the whole ASMR thing, here's a nice peel here on camera for you. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Awesome. So we've got sort of this glossy uh, black piano finish. We've got our buttons here. And then now we're ready to go to actually get the cable installed. So they've also got some techniques on how you can route this for the most effective and cleanest install. For demo purposes here, I'm just going to plug this into USB-C uh, power just to get this powered. But I'm just going to grab one of our cables here. Here's a nice long USB-C to USB-C cable. I've also got a couple of others here. It looks like a USB-C to A if I wanted to go that route. I think this one might go into the glove box there. This is the one that's going to go from the front of the car to the back of the car back there. But for now, let me just get this powered and show you how to set it up and how it works. Again, please ignore this cable here. There are different ways you can route this around so you don't see it. But again, just demo purposes here just to get it up and running. Let me get it powered on and show you what to do. So I'm going to jump into the control app. I see, welcome. You're closer than ever to driving with control. Watch the video. I already did all that. So now I'm going to enable Bluetooth. Going to hit OK. And now we should be able to pair with our control bar. So let me hit continue and let me log in with Tesla one sec. All right, now that I'm logged in, since I've got multiple Teslas on the account, it's going to ask me which one I'm going to be using the control bar with. It's going to be the Model 3 in this case. It's going to hit continue. Then it's going to say uh, connect control bar and then press start search button to keep the control bar. Remember to keep it near and ensure that Bluetooth is enabled. OK, so it looks like it's going here. OK, so that was user error on my part. I did not read the instructions clearly. I should have had it plugged in on the right side and not the left side, because as soon as I plugged that in, it immediately popped up on the screen. So let me hit enable Bluetooth. Hit continue, and then let's go through this process again, and I'm sure it's going to show up immediately. Yep, of course, it showed up immediately. So that was totally my fault. Got to have it plugged in on the right side. Let me hit continue. I was going to say there's an update available. Let's go and update it to get it on the latest software. And then I will come back to you once it's done. Now, while these Tesla hacks are super cool and really can change and enhance the way you use your Tesla, there are also, I should mention, some third-party apps that can do the same thing. That'll really unlock a whole new level of features and fun with your Tesla. And one of my favorites lately is super fun to use. It's extremely interactive and really is just going to make everyone in your life really love your Tesla. And that is a special app called Teslite that is the sponsor of today's video. As the name may suggest, this is an app that makes it super, super simple to make really awesome, immersive custom light shows for your Tesla. All you've got to do is simply import a song into the app. You then can sort of make your own light show interactively. You sort of tap on different areas of the screen. You can see the corresponding lights. And then as the song plays and as you press those buttons, it's going to record those actions. And then once you're done, you load it in your Tesla, and then you sort of sit back and relax and watch the light show festivities. This is almost addictively fun. I've now done multiple songs because it's so fun to sort of tap around on screen and make this happen. It's very interactive. You can see exactly what you're doing, and you're not going to get overwhelmed with options or controls or how do you do this or that. It's just very simple. You listen to the song, you tap what you want the lights to do, and then you're going to get a really awesome experience that you made right on your phone. It's so simple, it's so easy, it's so cool, and just is really fun to make some awesome light shows. And I promise you, once you do it, like once you actually use the app and go in there and make your custom light show, you'll be spending like me probably 20, 30 minutes just going in there and watching the lights move. It's fun, it's easy, it's simple, and you can get started right now today by clicking the link right down below. So learn more, check out Test Light for yourself, and make some really fun light shows right from Test Light. Again, learn more, check it out for yourself today. At the link right down below in the description. All right, so the update is completed. Let's go ahead and hit continue and see what we can do. So, whoa, this is pretty cool. So now we've got an overview here. We can see all six buttons, the dials on each side, and then all of the functions we have. So I guess, can we tap on this? Okay, so that's gonna be locked to setting the temperature. That's all that dial can do. And on the right here, this is also setting temperature. So it looks like those dials are just for the temperature. And then those buttons in the middle here is what we can program. So number one, for example, let's see what I can do. So I can adjust things like the LED lights. I can do seat heaters. I can open and close the trunk. That's really cool, it's just a button. I can do dog mode. So that's really cool. So I've got a couple of different options here. So this is, oh, okay, so these, uh, 
uh, down below are going to let me cycle through the buttons. So let's say, for example, with this button number one, I wanted to change this to, I guess, open and close the trunk. Let's do that. So that's save now. And then for button number two, I can have this keep the climate on. And then for button number three, what's this set for? Is it set for the camp mode? Okay, so let's say for this one, let's do... I don't know, um, LEDs on and off. So it looks like as of right now, there are a couple of built-in functions. I am confident the developers, I'm sure going to add more things in here. But for now, that's what I've got. And let's see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the AC. I don't know if that second button is going to do it. Oh, there it's going to do it. It's going to say done. So that's really cool. And then it's going to keep the climate on. And then let me turn down the fan speed so it doesn't get too crazy here for our microphones while this is on and I this is going to let me adjust the temperature so it's set at 60 now oh wow that's really cool so we can see here the display in the middle here is going to show us what's happening and then we've got sort of our real-time indicator from Tesla as well and the reason that this isn't on on this side is because there's no one sitting there the passenger side that's one of the newer updates here is that it's not going to activate if no one's sitting there so that's super cool so this button here should open the trunks so let's hit that button here whoa that's really cool you've got these um, little stickers here to put on here so you can actually see what these functions are. I understand that just on the base of it, on the surface, you might not know what each of these buttons does if you're sort of program programming it in the app, uh, but once you do, you can use these awesome uh, little stickers here to show you exactly what you've got. And one feature I actually forgot to show is that there's actually some LED lights under here as well. I have it programmed to button number three, and there you can sort of see them in action. And actually it's kind of nice because it lights up an area of the car that doesn't get a lot of light. Those are actually built in under the control bar, which is kind of cool that you get that as well as all these controls. So that is super cool. The next product I want to show are the sexy buttons from Enhance Auto. This is a really cool product because this is the first of its kind that I saw a couple of months ago that really added these physical controls to your Tesla. The installation for this is a little bit more advanced because you do need to get to sort of the back computer to put a splitter on there to get their sort of commander installed. It is very simple. Again, I'm someone who doesn't like to tinker with this stuff and even I thought it was pretty simple. It took me about five minutes to get that opened and get it installed. But why that's so important is that that's going to give sort of the enhanced Enhance uh, Auto app, or the Sexy Button app, I should say, sort of root level access to your vehicle, or, or root to the point that you can actually do sort of uh, different modifications and controls from the app itself to program with the buttons, and um, it really adds a cool experience. I think instead of me just sort of talking about it, let me go downstairs and again show you how these buttons work in your Tesla and how I really love them in my car and why they're such a hit with every person who rides in my Model Y. So I've gone a bit more in depth on the sexy buttons in other videos, so I'll leave a link down below to those if you want to check them out. But the highlight reel is that, simply put, these are the most advanced buttons that you can get for your Tesla. They use that commander I mentioned a moment ago to really hook into the car to allow you to do some really incredible things. Not only do they have a companion app here that allows you to get like live real-time uh, data from your car with sort of the speedometer there and other things, which is sort of cool, but also you can sort of program your buttons to do so many things. I mean, if you want the basics, like the crowd pleasers, in my opinion, this one right here always gets a lot of use from passengers. It's a simple glove box, open and close, just like that, which is really awesome to see. That's great, instead of having to dig through the screen. But then you can do way, way more. One of my favorites, and one that gets a lot of attention online, is the autopilot hands-on mode. Basically, what this does is help you sort of stop autopilot nag by telling the system that you are, in fact, paying attention. Now, of course, you still need to keep your eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, but instead of having to put some force on the wheel or do a scroll button or anything, I just usually keep this button in wherever is most convenient and comfortable to me. Sometimes it's on the door over here, sometimes it's down here, and I just, when I have the autopilot going, keep my finger sort of rested on it so I can just sort of click it and uh, the autopilot nag will go away. That's super cool, one of the really advanced features of this system, but there is so much more. I mean, you can adjust acceleration with the buttons, regen braking, you can control media, charging, you can also set up things with a single press, something with a double press, a long press. These buttons come in different packs, you can change them from a white on black to a black on black. Uh, here's the box just for demo purposes here and you can sort of see 
We see a couple of things here of what it can do. Uh, I've got them around my car. I love them. And again, super advanced. And if you really want to go uh, do a deep dive on, um, you know, really controlling a lot of aspects of your car, these buttons are pretty incredible. And what you can do with the Commander and all of the different settings is really, really cool. So I'll leave a link down below to these. I've got them installed in my car. I'll also leave a link down below some other videos I have on them, but um, really great. And if you want physical controls in your car and you also want to really uh, have them do some pretty advanced things, this is an awesome way to go and also like I mentioned very easy installation. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we've got to talk about CarPlay or Android Auto on your Tesla. I've shown a couple of different solutions for this in the past before. You could go as far as actually installing a third-party display that'll actually run this permanently. I've seen different uh, mirroring applications that work wirelessly that don't install uh, with sort of any uh, effort and it's really easy to do. But the best solution that I found, the easiest sort of off the shelf component that you sort of plug in and go is this. It's a, a box called the T2C. It's made from a company called Carlin Kit. And I've tried a lot of different iterations of this. I've tried a lot of different boxes. And this is the best I've found because it's literally a plug and play solution. You plug it into power, you sort of set it up with your phone, and then you've got wireless CarPlay or Android Auto right inside of your Tesla. Okay, so getting this installed is actually quite simple and is not as intimidating as the instruction manual might lead you to believe because if you go through this and you read it, it could be a little intimidating. A lot of uh, people always question me about the SIM card. You need the SIM card. No, you don't. This is because the manufacturer has updated this process. The setup process is pretty easy, though sometimes it could be a little tricky. So let me show you how to fix some of the most common issues and get this going. Basically, all you have to do with this box is just plug it in. You don't have to touch it after that. So I've plugged the USB-C cable in underneath here. I'm going to take the box. I'm going to plug it into power and then I'm going to jump on my phone and show you how this works. All right, so the device is powering up, and let me just say that there's nothing you have to do on the screen here to get started. What is really going to be happening here for the setup initially is going to be on your phone. So while this is powering up and I see the lights coming on here, I'm not sure if it's going to be up just yet, but let's go ahead and check. I'm going to go into the settings on my phone. I'm going to go to Wi-Fi, and I'm going to try to join the network of this box and you should see it pop up as something like auto kit which is exactly what this one here uh, is and i think the password is i think it's eight eight so i think it's eight 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 let's see if i know this i've done a couple of these so oh it uh, looks like i was right uh so i'm going to connect to that and then what i'm going to do is go to sort of the back end of this box to make sure it's up to date so i'm going to jump in here to the settings i'm going to see the router address is 192.168.3.1 so i'm going to now go into safari i'm going to go to 192.168.3.1 if i can type here correctly excuse me for that and this is going to be the back end of this box. And what we might see here is, oh, this actually looks like it's up to date. Let's go ahead and refresh. It looks like it's up to date, which is great. Sometimes uh, a lot of the boxes are not up to date. And if you don't have a box that's up to date, that's where you're going to run into a lot of issues. Uh, but if you do have everything set up, then actually it's gonna work like that really well. Uh, so because there's no update, everything is running perfectly. And the only thing I wanna check is for the Bluetooth modem on. Basically what this means is that it's going to use the Bluetooth connection from your phone, the internet connection from your phone, phone to give the internet that this box needs to connect to your car. All right, so now all we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Wi-Fi settings of our car. So I'm just going to jump up here to where it says LTE. I'm going to go see auto kit right there. And I'm going to type in our password, 8888888. I believe that's the same password for all those boxes here. And with any luck, our car should connect to it. And then we will be able to jump into the browser and actually go to the corresponding web page to get this all loaded up. Perfect, it's actually connected. I've had uh, mixed results. Like I said, the big issue here I've seen is a lot of these boxes are outdated. So if they're not uh, updated correctly, they're not going to work, but this one is uh, working out really well. Uh, now I'm going to go to the browser of the car, which is gonna be this icon here. And I believe the website is testpush.com. It's T-E-S-P-U-S-H.com. I believe that's the website and if it works, we should see, there we go, there's our interface, which is really awesome to see. So I can now see that I can pair uh, my device with Bluetooth on my phone. I can see the device. This is sort of the back end of uh, the box that I don't need to see. So now let me jump on my web, uh, my phone here rather, excuse me. I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi off 
and I'm going to connect this just to Bluetooth on uh, my phone. So, I mean, you just basically go to your phone, you connect to AutoCAD. I'm not going to screen record this because you just know how to do it. You basically connect your phone uh, via Bluetooth. I'm going to go ahead and hit pair, hit sync. And then with any luck in a moment here, we're now connected on our phone and we're going to see connecting there on the car and I'm going to be dropped right into CarPlay in like five seconds. So five, four, hit that, turn on, and we should be loaded into CarPlay right now. And hey, there we go. Full on CarPlay in our Tesla. That was incredibly easy. So now I'm dropped into the full on CarPlay experience. This is actually the new experience of iOS 17. I haven't seen this yet. And now we can see everything here is basically good to go. What you'll notice here is that it's actually fairly responsive. I can see all the different apps and I can launch all these apps just like I would and be able to have the full CarPlay experience. And the cool thing as well is that it's just running in the browser. So if I go into Drive, it's still gonna pop up here. I could even open a map if I wanted to. Let's say I wanted to open up Google Maps, for example, and have that running, I can do that. I could have ways if I wanted to. This is going to give you the full CarPlay experience running here in your browser. Though I will say there's one thing you want to make sure you do. This is going to display video. The touch component is going to work. I can jump into settings. I can change everything. But the audio is still going to run through your phone over Bluetooth. So you want to make sure that if we go into settings here, our phone is connected via Bluetooth. So we're going to make sure that that's still connected, which it should be. Yeah, I still got uh, the 15 Pro Max there. And then I also want to make sure that if I go up here to the network, go to Wi-Fi settings, I want to make sure that I can remain connected in drive. This is a really weird Tesla setting that I'm not sure why they have it set this way. But basically when you switch from drive to park or park to drive by default, it's going to disconnect you from your network. In our case, we want to make sure we are connected whether we're in drive or park. So the CarPlay isn't going to stop and start every time we happen to you know, shift from drive to park. So I'm going to hit remain connected while drive. And that is that. And yeah, so my Bluetooth is going to handle all of my audio. So I got all the streaming there. And then the browser here is going to handle the actual CarPlay experience. And if I go here, for example, to I'll uh, turn up the volume a little bit here, go to music and just show you how this works. Like, let's say I want to go to um, I'm listening to a lot of Moana these days with my two year old. Go to Moana. I tap on that and I can start playing it. Let's say I want to go to this song here. I'm not going to play it too long because of the uh, conflicts with YouTube copyright, but it's going to work perfectly like that. I can see my battery level of my phone. I've got my different apps. And like I mentioned, you're getting the full CarPlay experience here right inside of your Tesla. Uh, there is no way to make this larger because Tesla is going to limit the browser just to this. And I've seen some questions on the speed and how it works. I think it's fairly responsive. Again, this is going through the browser. It's streaming wirelessly. And this is only going to go as fast as the Tesla browser browser is. So it's a little bit better in the Ryzen based vehicles than it is in the Intel Atom based vehicles. So the newer Teslas are going to do better. And as we can see here, everything is working fairly well. Sometimes the touch control is a little weird, but that's just because we're sort of using CarPlay in our browser. There we go. But I've got full on messages support here. I can jump into settings and I can change, let's say the wallpaper, for example, if I wanted to go uh, to this blue, for example, I could. I mean, you're, like I said, you're getting the full CarPlay experience here. Even apps you'd want to use on CarPlay, like Waze, for example. Oh, you can do it. I've got full on Waze support here. If I go, there's Waze right there. And bam, there's Waze. I'm ready to go and I'm ready to navigate wherever I want to go. If I wanted to navigate to uh, Starbucks, I could go like this. Navigate to Starbucks. I guess I should have said Starbucks, but this should work too. Let's try it again. Starbucks. There we go. Tap on that. And yeah, like I said, arrival time on this route is similar to like I said, I mean, you're basically getting really the full on CarPlay experience uh, right inside of your Tesla. You could have Waze, for example. For me, I'm a big fan of third party uh, apps like Overcast for my podcast. So I've got that all going here. And again, uh, your phone's doing all the audio streaming, but you've got the CarPlay interface here to do your um, navigation. So if I was going to do an audiobook, I could use Libby. Uh, some people like the PlugShare app a lot if you want to look for third party charging stations. If there's an app that 
works on CarPlay, it's going to work on here perfectly well. And the touch responsiveness is pretty good. Some apps are better than others. Some have sort of funkier controls than others, but um, this is basically the full unencumbered CarPlay experience right on your Tesla. And it's all running through that box. So there you guys go. Hope that was helpful. Also, I should mention that if you use, I have a special coupon code down below in the description that you can get, uh, I think it's 18% off that Carlin kit box if you use my code. So check that out down below. But uh, CarPlay on your car. Yes, it's real. It exists. And this is the best iteration that I've seen so far. And hopefully it should just keep getting better uh, over the next couple of months. Let me know your thoughts, though. What do you think? What are your thoughts on physical buttons in the Tesla? Your thoughts on CarPlay? Do you like the idea? Do you not? Let me know down below. And also, if you leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and like this video, you'll be entered into a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card totally free. All you've got to do is do those three things and I'll pick a winner randomly in one week. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.